Hello everyone, I'm Norid and welcome to the third episode of I'm Social, the audio experience. Today we are going to talk about how you can be good at flirting. Yes, you are hearing me right. So if you are someone who is single or would like to overcome the fear of rejection or even would like to improve your interpersonal skill, I'm telling you, you should not miss this episode. And to talk about it, we have a very special guest today. Guys, let me introduce the amazing Jane Smith. Uh, she is a social and cultural anthropologist, an author, a TEDx speaker, and a flirtologist. Hello, Jane. It's really a pleasure to have you on I'm Social, the audio experience. So how are you today? I'm doing well, Nora. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, I'm so excited, actually, even though I'm married, but... I'd love to know how I can improve my flirting skills. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'll try and help. <laughs> yeah, you know, Jean, actually, I know a lot about you. I have listened to your TEDx, uh, I mean, video, and uh, I also saw a few of the videos, uh, which is available on YouTube. But I think it would be great if you can just tell who you are to our audience, who are especially from Malaysia, I think it will be a great experience for them to know who you are. So do you please introduce yourself a little bit? Sure. Okay. So as you mentioned, I'm a, a social and cultural anthropologist. And I think this is an important aspect because the mm -hmm. way that I approach flirting and even social interactions is from one mm -hmm. of someone who studies human behavior. Okay. Um, I think there's a lot of kind of bad information out there in the in the flirting world or even the romance world and yeah I feel it's important that what I bring to this is actually grounded in research that I've done and it's grounded in social science okay all right okay so actually um you know like during past few years uh what I realized uh, you have made the flirtology a popular term and uh, you also got a book called Flirtology, which was published in 2018. But I'm just curious, like, how did the term comes to existence? And could you tell our audience a little bit about your book as well? Sure. So, yeah, the term flirtology came about um, just as most good things do over a glass of wine chatting with friends. So that was about 15 years ago because I okay. wanted it. You know, the word flirting is fun. And in fact, in my first book, I asked 250 people in five different cities, mm -hmm. what is their definition okay. of flirting? And depending on your culture, you would have a different idea. And I thought, how can one word have so many different meanings for so many different people? I mean, you look at the one sure. in the dictionary for flirting, and it's something very dry. And I mean, like no one gave that as their definition. So just right. adding theology then added the sort of science part but the okay. book is a it's a compilation of all of my years of researching and working with clients and leading the fearless flirting tours and basically it's a manual of everything that I've ever discovered okay. and every every question anyone has ever right. asked me and in fact when I was I was in Kuala Lumpur in December and yeah. I was at oh, the bookstore okay. Uh, Kino, okay. I always get it wrong. How do I say it? Kino Kin Kunia? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm also not very bookstore. good at. Yeah, I'm also very not good at. Uh, I mean, <laughs> saying it because I'm also not a local. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you. It's not just me. And I warned them after we had a question and answer session, and I said, "Look, every question you ask me, it's going to be in the book. And every question they ask me, I'm like, yep. So it's on page 25, but I'll still answer okay. it for you." <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, like, I, I wish I knew, like, you came to Kale. So, I mean, I'd love to meet you in person. And I think oh. I've just missed that opportunity. <laughs> oh, well, next time I'll be back. Actually, I have a, a friend who has an engineering company there. And she's had me okay. over a few yeah. times to do workshops for her, her employees just about how to have okay. better communications, how to do better networking. Because obviously, okay. if you're you know, the, the skill of flirting, which is about connecting yeah. and making people feel good about themselves, this translates really well into other environments, both professional and work. Yeah, so. true, true. Um, as you say, like you have done, I mean, research for like 15 years, like there's a lot of questions you have. So 
I mean, but what was the real motivation behind becoming a flirtologist? I mean, it's just like people are asking because a lot of people are asking me about how I can flirt with that girl. But that was not the motivation for me. But what was the motivation behind becoming a flirtologist? Well, I think it's because, again, as, as my background, I'm naturally curious about human behavior and also finding oh, patterns right. in human behavior. Yeah. And I've done loads of traveling. I've lived in about six, six or seven different countries. I've probably traveled to oh. about 70 countries. Um, okay. And as I was in these different places, I noticed that people would flirt differently depending on their culture. And this really fascinated okay. me. Because first of all, what okay. was someone supposed to do if they didn't understand these cultural nuances? And this is what my yeah. first book is about. It's, um, it's called The Flirt Interpreter. And I okay. did major research in London, New York, Paris, and Stockholm. And in fact, I wrote my okay. master's dissertation comparing the flirting cultures of Paris and Stockholm because they were so different. Even though they're both European, they were very different. So I can say like it's kind of like your passion. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It really, I mean, my passion is helping people to have better interactions and helping people okay. sort of come out of their shells, come out of their boxes and trust who mm. they are. I mean, to be honest, that's, that's the deeper level that I, I'm working at here. It's, um, and flirting okay. is really a great way to help people feel empowered um, because True. it flirting brings out all these things that make us feel vulnerable so it's obviously fear of rejection it's okay. attractiveness like do people find us attractive um it's okay. it's, it's it has to do with our sexuality i mean it's okay. it hits a lot of these deep issues right uh before i go to my next question you just mentioned like you travel i mean a lot of countries, right? So, yeah. I mean, you just travel because you love to travel or you travel because of your research purpose and like just to explore how people, I mean, act and react in this thing? Yeah, mostly it's for my love of, of travel. And again, if, you know, my first degree is in cultural anthropology, I'm so interested in other cultures and people. But to be honest, we're okay. so much more similar than we are different. And that's, that's yeah. kind of what forget it's very easy to find like the obvious few differences it's the same when we talk about men and women men and women are s okay. more similar than they are different but it's like finding a couple different things to to think we're, we're separate from each other so that's the thing I've noticed yeah. but I, I I've been able to combine the two in answer to your question um yeah true so actually you mentioned about the fear of rejection which actually I also had for quite a long time. Um, but if you see quite a number of people tend to shy away from approaching others in person. Um, and I had that issue as well. And I think still I'm having a little bit, uh, which I think maybe because of fear of rejection, right? So how can you help those people to overcome that fear of rejection? And because it's not easy. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I have overcome a little bit, but still I have that uh, inside me. So how, how you can help those people to overcome that? Yeah. So the key is, and how do I say this without sounding cheesy, but the key is being comfortable in yourself, like being really happy with who you are. Um, and what I mean by this is when we feel rejection, it's because uh -huh. people are not making us feel good about ourselves. That's the perceived idea. But if we actually cool. are giving ourselves everything we need, like self-value, mm -hmm. self-worth, self-care, nourishment, all this stuff... Then okay. when we approach someone and they're not interested for whatever reason, we're not getting our self-worth from them. We're already taking care of that ourselves. So rejection doesn't hurt as much or at all for that matter. In fact, okay. the ideal would be to look at rejection as mm. a really effective way to figure out who we match with. So if someone rejects okay. us instead of like, oh my gosh, nobody likes me. This is the worst thing ever. You can think... Yeah. Actually, we weren't a good match. Thank God they saved me so much time. Let me find someone who I am a good match with. Yeah, it's like bring a lot of positivity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a different way of looking yeah. at it. But the thing is, yeah. one reason why people are wary of flirting or approaching people or even talking to new people mm -hmm. is because they use that time as a chance to yeah. find out, am I good enough? 
And that's why potentially you can be hurt. But if you do that yeah. outside of that arena, like on your own, and it's called self-development, that means when you yeah. go into this arena of flirting, dating, talking to strangers, whatever, you, you don't yeah. need to think, do people like me? Let me see if anyone around here likes me. It's like, no, you, you, you have that covered. You've already done that. Instead, yeah. you can see, as I just said, like, who's a good match for me? Who has my same sense of humor? Who, who's friendly? You know, you're yeah. looking at it in a different way. But, you know, Jane, uh, being very honest with you, I, uh, I understand it. But when most of the time when I go to um, any event, um, at some time, if I try to reach people and if I have a feeling that probably um, they are showing like they're busy or probably they're not giving the attention, uh, I should stop myself. And I know like it's OK, probably he or she is not a good match, but I don't have the motivation to approach the next people. Uh, even yeah. though I understand, yes, probably it can happen or probably he is really busy. So, you know, I can't overcome from that situation, uh, yeah. even though I understand it. But so yes. how, can, how can I help myself? That is such a good question. And you're right. Hearing me say it in theory, it's like, yeah, OK, yeah, that makes sense. But actually yeah. living it and experiencing it, it feels so much differently. So let me answer yeah. your question, what, what I would recommend. Um, so first of all, I would make myself approach three people in this situation that you're talking about. I would just make myself because what happens is it could be a misconception of your mind. Like you could actually not be getting it right. You might think, oh, they're too busy to talk to me. Because again, I also teach networking and obviously going yeah. into a room and you're supposed to network and meet people if you yeah. go in and think everyone's too busy, no one's interested in talking to me, you've kind of wasted your time, right? So okay. what you do is before you get into the room, you set yourself goals or tasks. So I'm going to talk to five people. So even if after the first one, you feel like, oh, this isn't going well, you still have to do it four more times. And then we're right. talking about sample size. So in anthropology, this is really important. Sample size yeah. means something must happen enough times in order for us to know it's true or not. So if our sample okay. size is one, it's not true. Yeah. If our sample size is five, we're getting closer and closer to what probably is true versus okay. what our mind has made up is true. And these two things can really? often be very different. Okay, interesting. I'll try that. So next time, yeah, honestly, I haven't tried more than one or two people Probably max three, but yeah, I haven't really tried five people. Probably, yes, you're true. If I can approach five people, I might see a different result. Yes, and there's so, also um, something to look out for because we always want to stack the cards in our favor. And one of the best ways to do that is we only talk to people who look open. So that means yeah. I've, especially we can read their body language. So people who have open body language. So that means for for these sort of events, your shoulders are facing out towards the room or okay. your eyes with whoever's eyes are looking around. Also, there are okay. more natural places to begin a conversation. So maybe someone yeah. who's getting coffee or someone who's at the food buffet, those are yeah. much easier places to strike up a conversation than like, you know, walking across a room and saying, oh, hi, you know, which is okay sometimes, well, but you know, so just stack the cards yeah. in your favor by already only yeah. approaching people who look open with their open body language or who happen to be right. like at the food or drink table. Okay. Okay. I will get that. Uh, I mean, I'll definitely try that. And when you're talking about this thing, what that reminds me of like a uh, methodology, uh, what I watch your, actually I watched your TEDx like two years back. And I remember you're mentioning about a methodology called hot tape, right? <laughs> yes. So, uh, and this is something what we have already explained a certain part just now, uh, if I'm not wrong. So, would you please explain to us that what is that hot tape? Like, I know it a little bit, but it would be great if you can explain it to our audience as well. Yeah, sure. What I found when I was researching for my first book is there mm -hmm. were six signs that people told me they could recognize when someone was flirting with them. And they okay. also use those same signs themselves for when they were okay. 
flirting with other people. And so I, I kept forgetting, I could only, when I was giving talks, I could only remember five out of six. So um, okay. I have to admit, it wasn't even me who thought of the hot ape. It was a, a, a client of mine who, who would attend the talks. And then he finally said, okay. Gene, to help you remember, why don't you just remember the acronym hot ape? So each of these signs of flirting um, are represented through this acronym. So just briefly, okay. I'll go through. I mean, you can, uh, your listeners can watch the TED Talk for, for more yeah. explanation. But H is yeah. humor. And so people okay. said they, they use more humor or also humor is a good way to figure out quickly, do I connect with someone? Because okay. if you are sort of being playful or having banter and they're not getting you, it's not really mm. going to work with this person. So you can quickly figure out, you know, for a good match. Um, o is okay. open body language. And as you understood, I was just talking about the open body language, oh, which is useful right. for like every setting. I tell people, mm. don't. Don't just base who you approach on whether or not you find them attractive, because that's an illusion. Because think of how yeah. many times we think someone's attractive and then we speak with them and we're just like, yeah. hmm, no, not really. <laughs> or, even yeah. the, or even the other way, we don't really notice someone at first. And then as we start speaking with them before our very eyes, they start becoming quite attractive. So just right. approaching someone based on our initial impression of their looks is, is really an illusion. It's not helpful. Instead, we okay. should look for people who have open body language. So that's the O. Okay. Uh, okay. T is for touch. Now this one is probably the trickiest one because as my friend said, touch means you're culpable. I mean, if you've touched someone, it's sort of like you're not in the friend zone anymore. You're flirting. And okay. Yeah. So a little, just to be a little bit safer in our sort of day and age about the touch is you want to make sure yeah. that you're already feeling a vibe from them before you just touch them. And I, I understand in, in different yeah. cultures, we, th we think about touch differently, but maybe just exactly. like a small, small tap on the upper back or, you know, just something safer like this. Mm -hmm. um, a is attention. Oh, and by okay. the way, just going back to the touch. Um, okay. I'm, I'm thinking particularly of Malaysian culture. Um, I would recommend if it does happen with someone you don't know well, again, I, I don't okay. even see that happening in your culture, but it would probably be best if the woman were to initiate it. And right. I don't see that. Yeah, happening. I think it's the same yeah. yeah. I don't see that happening with strangers in Malaysia. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> right. so adapt accordingly. Um, yeah. A is for the attention, and that's how much attention this person is showing you versus other people. Yeah. So if they're giving you most of their attention, it means they're flirting with you and they're, they're interested. Now, okay. P is for proximity, and this means two things. One, is this person first across the room, and then all of a sudden they're near you? That's a good sign. The other okay. is when you're actually talking with them. How close are you guys standing together? As one of my interviewees okay. said, they're in your personal space. You either mind or you don't. <laughs> so, right. so people will stand closer than, than in a normal conversation. And then finally, okay. do you remember what E, e is? Uh, no. Sorry to put you on the spot. It's the most yeah. famous one. It's eye contact. Oh, yeah. Shit, I remember. <laughs> it's too I easy. Remember. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember. Because after you say, I remember the TED Talk, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. So the last yeah. one is for eye contact. And this is like the number one way that people say that they flirt across different cultures. This is... Like, True, I think, I think eye, eye contact is the most um, used and the strongest one I, I probably felt. Um, I mean, this especially happens in, in this region, I think. The eye contact mm -hmm. humor is one of the most strongest... Um, tool they use to flirt with someone else. Mm, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. So that's that's the hot ape. But let me, I mean, ask you something. So <clears throat> there's two things you mentioned that O and T, like um, T for touch and um, O for like your, I mean, how open you are, right? Your body language. Yes. yes. But nowadays, if you see, it's, I mean, our society is. 
I mean, working in a different way, people are now getting more busy with like digital platforms like Tinder, Facebook, Instagram, uh, and they are getting connected with other people through those platforms. So how can someone who is, I mean, more active in digital platforms, how can he use the ONT? He cannot use ONT, right? If I'm not wrong. Yes. Well, I had to go through this with um, a client of mine was really into the digital platforms and he was convinced that you could use hot ape digitally just as really? well as but in person. Yeah. So we went okay. through each one and he explained to me and in the end okay. he agreed you can't do touch. Really? So, how, how, how can we do that? Exactly. Exactly. And also, as I explained to him, the thing about the face-to-face -face or in-person flirting is things can escalate in a much more natural way. Like someone says something funny and then yep. the other person laughs and then the eye contact might change because now you're like, oh, who's this person? And then who knows? Maybe you might sit closer. The proximity gets closer. So in, in real right. life, it's a million times better because these things can naturally escalate where they couldn't online. And secondly, yeah. the only, I mean, I didn't mention this in the hot ape, but one of the best things about flirting is the feeling. It's the vibe mm. between two people. It's the electricity, if you're lucky. And none of that can be replicated digitally. Okay. And the okay. only reason that people do this digitally rather than in person, the main reason, yeah. well, one is convenience, but the main reason yeah. is they mm. think that Rejection will hurt less if you're behind your phone. True. So if, uh, if all people need to do is what I was saying earlier, get, get to grips yeah. with like feeling themselves and being comfortable in themselves, then they'll have so much more fun. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, true. Um, if, I, if I take a look, uh, especially in this Southeast Asia, I think 10 years back, it was really challenging for a, for a boy to go to a girl and say like, say for if he likes her or not. But mm -hmm. nowadays uh, they just text and if he or she get rejected, they try to take it, I mean, a bit easier than before. So I think, yeah, you, you say it absolutely right. People now have a place to hide behind and uh, digital, I mean, is helping them to do that. Yes, yes, exactly. But the question is like, I mean, just because something is easy, it doesn't mean it's good. Like I often think of McDonald's. Yeah, it's really easy. Yeah. Or ordering food. That's an even better example. Ordering food sure. like on your food app. By the time it gets to you, it's taken forever. Like you could have cooked something really healthy and more delicious <laughs> in half the time. So it's sure. not actually easy. Sure. It gives you the impression sure. that it's easy. And then it gets to you. The food is cold. You've spent a lot of money yeah. for low quality stuff. And I just feel like the way people are trying to use the digital world to interact is very similar yeah. to it's the illusion is it's easy. I won't be rejected, but at the end of the day is, are you getting what you want? Like, are, I just feel like we're not. Exactly. Not hundred percent for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So as uh, I remember you were talking about that, you work with some of your client uh, to grow their network as well. And we know, like, I mean, having a good network always, like, um, I mean, it, it can help you to do well in your personal and professional life. So how this flirtology can or your hot, hot app method can help someone to grow their network? Yeah, I think it's about being open. I mean, I, I mentioned about open body language and how important that is. But yeah, it's just sort of, I mean, the thing is, human connection is what keeps us alive. You know, it's so important. Okay. And even just having a chat with someone at the grocery store or whatever can really help make us yeah. feel connected, which is something, again, the digital world is really good at. I'm not, you know, I'm not completely against the digital world. It definitely has a place. Like, look at us here. I'm in London. You're in KL. We're, you know, on this platform. Like, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not totally anti-technology. Yeah. But we yeah. become really lazy and complacent and in using it. So getting back True. to your question, how can this help us grow our network? It's really just yeah. about, it makes it easy to connect with people. 
this whole okay. sort of like what I'm offering with the, the flirtology way of life. And I really recommend if people are able to, to read, especially my second book, um, okay. flirtology, stop swiping, start talking and find love because it's basically okay. about how to have good interactions, how to improve your interactions, which can be used across your business life, social life, romantic life. It's actually true. I mean, once you know, um, once you can overcome the fear and you know how to communicate with people effectively, then actually you can implement in your personal, professional or any life. And I think, yeah. um, I mean, that, that, that's the example, what I always give, that is my example. I was not really confident like seven years back, but then eventually I really work on it. And then I think I have implemented the same thing in my personal and professional life mm. and it, it really works. So there's no like rocket science that you have to implement a different thing to yeah. do flirting and then you can do a different thing to grow your network. Yeah. And so what did you do, Norid, that was different that helped you improve? I think I just... I was doing the same thing what you have mentioned, but my um, I'm, I'm a big fan of Gary V. Uh, so he always talks about like whoever, I mean, say what, don't bother about it, don't give a shit. Because at the end of the day, uh, you're paying for whatever you're doing. So if you're doing a mistake, uh, you're paying the price for it. No one else. So if someone is talking about it, just don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. You just do whatever, I mean, however you want. And uh, if you follow a process, um, eventually you can overcome any problem. So what I did in last five years, I just start doing what I love to do. And I start and I stop listening what others are saying about mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. and uh, just keep doing what I want to do. So if I would like to approach Jean, I will do it. Uh, so probably someone is saying, oh, you know, like Jean will never, never reply your text because she is a famous writer, but I don't mind if she don't reply. I just take it easy and move forward. So I think that's really helped me. I try to take things positively and I try to, I mean, consume a lot of positive content, try to read a lot of positive books. That's really helped me a lot. That is great. And I love what you're saying because the key to not taking rejection personally is we do yeah. what we want to do and the other person yeah. is allowed to do what they want to do. So that means exactly. if we want to, you know, approach someone, yeah. I say as humans living on this earth, everyone can ask anyone, everyone else one question. That's it. Just one. And then if exactly. the other person is not open to that, then the other person needs to leave immediately. Most people are very open to that because as I said, we're craving connection. But getting back to what yeah. you said, and this is the key, is like we cannot be responsible for the reaction or let's see, I want to phrase this correctly. Like assuming we're not doing anything, you know, out of bounds or inappropriate, we can't yeah. be tied to the reaction of other people. That is their privilege. We act exactly. the way we do what we want to do and they are allowed to do what they want to do. The problem is when we're tied in and also want to try yeah. and control their reaction to us. That's when rejection hurts. Yeah, and I think we should not think of like, which is not in our control. So we don't know like, what will be the reaction from other side. We have the control on us. So I think we should focus on that part rather than, uh, I mean, the other side, I mean, yes. where we have no control of it. Yes, that but is so key. I'm really glad you, you brought that up because that is so key. Yeah, I think, are you checking uh, Gary B's content? Probably you can check his content. I mean, uh, he used the F word a lot in his content, but if you can <laughs> ignore that part, I think uh, he actually um, he knows how to pump you up and he puts uh -huh. a lot of positive. Like, I mean, you know, like why I, I start um, watching your videos because your video was all about positivity. So you're telling people, uh, what they should do, rather you're not saying what they shouldn't do. So mm -hmm. I think that actually helps me to watch the whole, if I'm not wrong, the, the whole video was 12 to 13 minutes, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I watched the full, full video. Wow. Yeah. I held your attention for 12 to 13 minutes? That's saying something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because the, the, the content uh, title was so interesting. 
um so i was wow someone is talking about doing flirt really <laughs> i mean how it's possible <laughs> well we have to thank my husband for that he thought of the title so uh we i, I will okay. tell him he did a good job <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure for sure <laughs> okay jim you uh, we are like almost end of our discussion but before we finish i just want to ask you one more thing that um when is a good time and a place to flirt with someone like should we try it in everywhere like in my office or when i'm at home or when i'm at like in an event or i mean is there any specific good time or place because mm-hmm. you have done a lot of research on it so probably yeah. you can share something yeah it's interesting because i actually asked this question in my first book yeah. when i was interviewing like where do you flirt is there a, a good time or place and what I found actually is a lot of it, and this includes for me as well, a lot of it is dependent okay. on our mood. How are we feeling that day? I think okay. that's probably the biggest thing to think about is, uh, yeah, you know, like some days I'm full of energy and I'm happy and I'm just either chatting or maybe even flirting with lots of people. But other days right. I don't feel like it, so I don't. Uh, for other yeah. people, it's some people like it better at nighttime you know, because they just feel like it fits. But other people say, no, actually, I like day flirting because no one is on guard. No one expects it. So it just seems it's, yeah. But as for you, you should definitely be flirting at home. I mean, if your wife is there, (laughs) you should love it. Yeah. I mean, you know, to me, I I think uh, the morning time is the right. I mean, after I wake up, I feel so energy. (laughs) Yeah. I think that was the very right time for me. Great. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Then. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, one more thing, I, I'm I'm really interested to know that how can how can we tell the difference between someone complimenting us and someone who is flirting? As sometimes the two can look similar. Honestly, sometimes uh, I I saw a lot of time people actually misjudge it. I I probably complimenting someone, and then he or she thinks okay. Uh, this guy or this girl is doing flirting with me, but actually I was not. So how can we tell the difference? Yeah. So the compliments are usually just that. It's like, it's a compliment. And a compliment is a statement, in fact. So it's just saying okay. like, oh, you look nice today. Or, I, I, oh, that, that dress looks amazing on you or whatever. And then it's done. It's a compliment. Okay. Uh, flirting okay. Is, is, has more around it. So that might be just the opening and then can oh so what are you doing today you know it's like continuing the conversation so that's one way you can tell is it just a statement is it just saying a compliment and then that's it or is there more around it and then the other thing is about the intention I mean we can't do this because it's audio but I always like to show um, eye contact a Mm. friendly eye contact and then b flirty eye contact And basically, all I do is change the intention behind my eyes. That's it. I don't do anything else. And people can always tell the difference. So, so much is about someone's intention. Do do you have any video where you have shown those eye contact? That's a good question. (laughs) I'd like to see it. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, Maybe I can think, I, I could, who knows? I do have a lot of stuff out there. I have no idea, really. Okay. <laughs> maybe that's something for me to think about recording if I don't. Huh, okay. okay. Thanks, good tip, that's useful. <laughs> so, Jean, uh, we are almost end of our discussion, but before we finish, do you have any final tips to our audience um, they should try to yeah. improve themselves? Yeah, um, I think the thing is, what happens is we get trapped in our mind chatter. And we create a story and it's always negative about what's going to happen if we do anything, you know, approach that person, talk to that person. And so then we don't do it because the story Mm -hmm. our mind creates is so powerful that it just makes us be still. So what I would like to do is challenge people the next time they feel like doing something again, we're assuming Mm -hmm. it's appropriate. It's not, you know, out of, out of line. They just Mm -hmm. don't listen to their mind. They don't think just go. That's like the new mantra. Don't think, just go and just do it and okay. see what happens in real life and not just do it once, 
but build up your sample size so it's big enough so you understand what's true and what's not. Okay, I take the challenge and I'll do something and I will update you that she and I have done these things and this is what happened. <laughs> Good. I, I will look forward to that. And that's important because if your listeners are doing this, they should like have their friend. Um, they need some accountability, like, you know, like you're reporting yeah. back to me. So make sure you right. find a way to be held accountable for this. And then you practice and then you get better. Okay. So if the listeners are doing it and if they have more questions, uh, so where they will find you, how they can connect with you or they can drop a message or queries. So which, which <laughs> platform do you bit. prefer? <laughs> I am a little bit busy, but um, I can try. I can try and respond to people personally, but usually I do that in my private coaching sessions. Okay. Yeah. So um, is there any way they can be in touch with you or if they'd like to have your coaching, how can they contact you? Okay. Well, basically they can find me on my website, which is flirtology.com. Okay. Okay, so uh, I will add your flirtology.com and also gene-smith.com in our yeah. podcast as Perfect. well so people can find you Perfect. easily. So the, the only reason I was being a bit, um, uh, I don't know, cagey there is because I have two younger brothers. I've been giving men, young men advice like my whole life, okay. them and their friends <laughs> about women. Okay. And basically I get emails from men, young, mostly young men around the world. You name the country, okay. they email me asking me for advice because there's this woman <laughs> that they're in love with and they don't know what to do. So I'm not saying that, okay. I mean, I, I do answer most of their emails. So I'm not saying that, okay. you know, I can't help you, but I do have a pretty full inbox. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I wish I knew you like, Eight years back, then I would have like Aww. sent you my and uh, solve it. <laughs> well, you had a happy, yeah. happy ending, happily ever after, right? Yeah, thanks God that I, I, I made it happen finally. <laughs> Good for you. Excellent. Yeah. So, Jane, thanks a lot uh, for your time. It was really amazing to have this discussion with you, and I'm pretty sure our audience will find it really insightful uh so thanks again um so yeah that's all from us today so guys i hope you you really enjoy the discussion um of this episode so if you guys have any question or any query you can reach uh, jane through the email uh, or through her website which will be shared in the description box so yeah that's all from us today hope to see you guys again thank you bye bye